Hey guys, and welcome to What's Up Jude. Hello guys. <laughs> Hi guys. And welcome back to this new episode of What's Up Jude. We are super excited to introduce you to our new guest. And uh, as you said in the title, uh, we're going to talk about social media, but also about minorities and racism. But before continuing, just like the usual, if you like the episode in the podcast, follow us on our IG, which is What's Up Dude Pod. And you can also use the hashtag WUD. So today, we would like to introduce you to Ellie, Ellie Kim. And we're super happy and grateful for having her today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, so Ellie, would you like to introduce yourself in whatever way you want, whether that be sorry for, um, I don't know, by, I don't know, a poem, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. I, I'm sorry. I don't have a creative thing prepared, but my <laughs> name is Ellie. Um, I'm a recent graduate um, of Johns Hopkins University, and I do content creation part-time. And um, I'm on a lot of different socials as well. And what do you like to do in your free time? Um, I really love like music and art. So I'm a violinist and I perform in um, my orchestra. I also sing in an acapella group and help direct that. Um, I also do volunteering with music and violin um, in my free time and a lot of other things too related to acapella. You're doing amazing yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things comparing to us. That's that's interesting. <laughs> that's you. impressive yeah. too. Thank so you. Leslie, would you like to yeah. I, the first I want so okay. the first question is how did you start um creating content and why yeah so i started creating content seriously at the start of the covid 19 pandemic mostly because i do a lot of creative things like the music um the singing and i didn't have that once i had to go home for college and I was just left with no activities. And I'm a very activity driven person. Yeah. Um, and therefore I asked myself, what can I do? How can I communicate with people? How can I still bring that um, in a digital platform? And that's why I turned to TikTok, which was becoming very popular at that time because of the COVID-19 pandemic and everybody was home. So that's how I really started. And um, since we're talking about minorities and I think you are Korean American, right? Yes. Um, was, it, was it hard to be recognized that is not the, the exact word that I want to use, but for what you're doing, which is um, actually fashion videos. And uh, yeah, was it hard to be recognized? Yeah, I think my, um, my journey was a little bit different because I first started with really random TikTok videos. And then I started talking more about Korean culture. So I shared tips on how to act in Korea, the mannerisms, the things that you should be aware of when you go there in case you visit. And that really blew up. And that's what mainly blew up my TikTok account. And then I slowly started to realize that I also wanted to talk about fashion because that's a more passion point of mine than just talking about Korean culture, especially because I'm in America and I'm, I would say I'm more Korean American than actually Korean. Um, so therefore I switched to TikTok fashion. And that was a little bit harder because I feel like when it comes to beauty standards, unfortunately minorities do not meet that beauty standard, the blonde hair, the light blue eyes, we just don't. Um, and it's a lot harder to be seen as aesthetic and to have a lot of um, value in the fashion industry. That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, since you are part of a minority, and as you said, it is really hard for minorities to be recognized for whatever they are doing, whether that be music, acting, and other things, have you ever faced racism on that plat on those platforms or even in real life and um sorry <laughs> i don't know how to say that but um does that um racism impacted the way you you shared your content yeah so i definitely have experienced racism um especially on tiktok i would say more than instagram or any other platform um so i have made a lot of tiktok videos about like one, the fox eye trend, as you know, um, that was pretty popular, um, kind of near the COVID-19 pandemic. Also just general um, violence against Asians because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I've spoken out about those and the comments that I received, some are very positive, some are in agreement. 
Others are pretty racist and in opposition. Um, and there's actually like, I have like one consistent pair of haters. <laughs> um, they're best friends and they have repeatedly <laughs> called me racial slurs um, and just very just offensive things. Um, and they're actually known to have broken the law several times in several Asian countries because what they do is they go to these Asian countries and they try to pick up Asian girls and then they sexually exploit them. So they either record them without their consent or they just do things without their consent. And um, actually like governmental authorities are like, they have them on their blacklist to like make sure that they catch them if they ever enter the country. Um, so I feel like sometimes I'm targeted by them because they make multiple accounts after I block them, they make a new one. And then they like comment something on my video. Um, so that's like the worst that I've experienced online. And yeah, I, when I was younger, it's more of microaggressions. Like, oh, of course you got a hundred percent because you're Asian. Like what, I can't expect anything less than you because of that. So you not really recognize for the hard work you put in compared to somebody else who isn't. <clears throat> um, yeah, but I don't think I've experienced any violence, which is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't want you to experience that actually, because that is the worst Anyone. I think. Yeah. Um, and how you, you deal with that? Because um, you talk about it so, you know, naturally, but how you deal really <laughs> with it? Because I know some people can be really touched and um, I don't know, sometimes it can lead to mental health problem. So yeah, tell us, tell our listeners, maybe they have been harassed or because of their gender or ethnicity so yeah yeah um at first i was definitely affected by it i remember just like they someone stitched one of those people um stitched my video and talked about me online and i was this is my first time being on tiktok it's my first time people are actually like looking at my content and i was just stunned i was like how could someone be like that um and in such a public manner as well so i felt really just ashamed and i remember crying <laughs> that no <laughs> but i one thing that i really want to do is and i try to do all the time is if something like that happens i try to bring attention to it and i really take solace in my followers and my viewers so if something like that happens i post it immediately and i like attach how i feel um and like what i think people should keep in mind if that happens to them and it's really heartwarming because so many of my followers then tell me that they're in support that regardless of what happens, that they are on my side and they recognize these systemic issues. And that really helps me. Um, I feel like I'm in solidarity with so many people, even though I don't really know them in person. Um, and it really helps. And like just the fact that we're sharing, I also share their comments too. So it's kind of like a community where we can talk about these things without any fear of judgment. Oh, Leslie, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we underestimate just a little thing. I think we underestimate the power of social media in a good and bad way because as you said we can share our experience and with the community but we also um more vulnerable is it yeah we're more vul vulnerable yeah, yeah. yeah. I think <laughs> <laughs> sorry no that was a perfect word to say it yeah i think yeah, I really like to approach my um, Instagram account, especially because I've kind of taken a step back from TikTok and then gone more to Instagram because I think Instagram DMs, Instagram comments are just like so much more, it's easier for me to like build a community. And one thing that I really try to get my followers to do is to be vulnerable, not just with me in the DMs, but with other people in the comments as well. And I really don't want to be the type of content creator that just spits out content and then like have people watch it that's not what yeah. i want that's missing the social media aspect of it so i really like talking to people in the dms and a lot of people open up about their own stories with um either being sexually assaulted dealing with gender-based violence um again racism and it's really cool to see and i'm like i'm in a very privileged position where i can talk to them about those things and when you created uh, this instagram account or tiktok account have you ever um... I don't know, think that it would be that important and that you can share your thought and also talk with other people that have experienced the same thing as you? Yeah, I think so. I actually, before TikTok, I did Instagram kind of half heartedly. I really like taking pictures, I really liked editing. Um, and I kind of acted like 
I had a lot of followers and I only had like 500. <laughs> and That's a lot. lot. That is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but they were all my friends. <laughs> um, and I felt like I was a little disheartened because I felt like people weren't really taking what I say into account. Yeah. But I just kept going. I just kept posting regardless of the jokes people made about why are you doing that? That's so cringy. Why are you sharing your post on your story? No, that's, that's the attitude we like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So many people have that attitude, but look at where we are now. You have a podcast. That's amazing. I could never do that. And then I have a platform and I feel like people greatly underestimate us, but we just like keep continuing to create content and we just like, we like launch into something really great. Actually, guys, uh, for our listeners, if you don't know, that's where we... We meet Ellie that was on Instagram DMs, I think. And yeah. she was like, yeah, I don't like posting about um, my personal account. And I was like, yeah, me too for my podcast account. And then everything clicked. <laughs> and then <Yeah>. we <laughs> are talking about um, racism, social media, because um, personally, I've never experienced racism, but I know that my parents have. And um, I can also feel what you're saying Actually, I did face um, Just Alex, yeah, because it's the podcast. Nobody, yeah. like most of the people does not they know. They don't know. Yeah. I'm the black one, guys. <laughs> 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 yeah, because they don't know. I forgot yeah. about that. But um, I've been targeted about my eyes, not my, my skin color, but my eyes, because they do not look like, um, I don't know, Caucasian eyes, actually, because I do have um, Asian people in my family, too. So when I was younger, I, I think you have experienced that too, Ellie, you know, when people are mocking your eyes. Yes. And I, when I was younger, I was like, yeah, I don't like my eyes because of that. So not for my skin, my skin tone or color, but more for my features. So yeah, I, uh, I understand you. I feel you. Yeah. The eyes thing for sure is, I mean, a huge thing in Korean culture, because kind of like when you get braces in America, it's kind of like a coming of age thing. you you just get it because you do. That's what people do. It's really? Thing, oh, in America. Yes. Oh, that's it's just so like you sad. Have <laughs> but then in Korea, um, once you're of age, uh, kind of like as a graduation present, you get the double eyelid surgery so that your eyes look bigger and you actually yeah. have an eye fold. I'm a monolid. I have no eyelids. You're so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I feel the same way that you do sometimes. I never wear eye makeup. I don't wear eyeshadow even though I want to, but it just does not look right <laughs> when I put it on. And you know, that's Sometimes I'm just like, why can't I just look like the pretty makeup gurus on Instagram? So I totally feel what you're saying. Leslie, would you yeah. ask the <laughs> okay. next question? So, um, <laughs> we don't know how to do the transition, guys. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's a serious one. So due to recent events and how people uh, now are reacting, uh, how do you think the word is shifting for all sorts of minorities yeah i think with the um influx of social media use especially how everybody is going to zoom everybody is using you know video chat and texting to communicate i feel like social media is going to take such a larger role um than it did previously even though it was on the rise i think there's like a leap now and it's just got yeah. exponentially bigger and with TikTok, the thing I like about TikTok is that it can give people who don't really have a voice, a voice, because the, just the virality of it and the particular algorithm, literally anybody can go viral if their content is good or informative. And I know that there was this one girl, um, she, I mean, no one really knew her. She was just a small high school girl, but she really had, she built like a platform of a hundred uh, thousand followers. And she talks solely about um, social issues, um, gender-based violence, racism, war, all those things. And she said in an interview that she wouldn't normally have been able to do that without TikTok. So I feel like TikTok allows people to talk more about these issues. But at the same time, I've done a lot of research for this um, for a paper in my class and TikTok filters specific things. Like they rarely show um, images of um, slums in India. They don't show images of like really 
poverty stricken areas because they want to filter it and make sure that everything is aesthetic to keep people on the platform. And that in and of itself makes TikTok its own political actor. And that's like the one gripe I have. Yes, it can help people talk more about what they're going through. But on the other hand, they also filter. So like one video yeah. that I had commenting about how I was called a racial slur, that went under review and people couldn't watch it. And then the video that actually called me a racial slur did not. <laughs> I saw that on your story and I was like, what the heck? Like, oh, no. <laughs> that does not make sense. Yeah. And then I think your video um, has been uh, restored on TikTok. So yes, yes. Um, the comment was reported multiple times and then I um, asked for a review of the content. So now it's back up. <laughs> that is, I don't know what to say because I feel like in one hand, social media are so powerful, but they want us to live in that bubble, I think. Yeah. That's and it. in order to, I don't know, I don't have to say that in English, <laughs> in order for you to um, understand social media, you have to have one, one step in the real world and one step in the media world. So yeah. And, uh, and sometimes I think it's a trap because uh, it depends on when on what you see on social media. You think everybody uh, see the same post or whatever, and so you think everybody has uh, the same opinion. So sometimes I think it's it's a trap, but it's a good way to share uh, whatever you want. Actually, you're right, and also you mentioned being a trap. I know that several of my friends, they do a lot of activism offline. Like they talk to their friends, they talk to their family about it, they go to protests, but they just don't post on social media. But when they don't post, people are like, well, you're not posting, so you can't possibly be on their side. And that just makes a lot of other people feel like the, the pressure that they have to post something when they don't even know the gravity of the situation. And I'm trying to get better at that myself. Like when I see a post, um, that's like, that shows different resources and stuff. Honestly, sometimes I haven't checked them. I haven't fact, um, cross checked them with other people and I have to do better at that. I have to do my own research and then make sure that what I'm posting actually reflects how I feel about it. Because I think I'm, I tend to be like your friend also. I don't post on my story, but I do talk with my friends. We do talk uh, about racism with Leslie, what happened uh, last year, for example, with George Floyd, um, like all my friends were posting and I was like, oh, do I need to post because, you know, um, I'm also black. So that is also my community. And I was like pressured. We need to think also before acting. So yeah. talking with people, then posting on the, on the social media. And I think also, um, because I know some people, uh, are like, oh, you haven't post, so maybe you don't care about it. But some people uh, post, but they just, you know, I post, so I did what I have to do, and now I'm okay, you know. And so I think it's also the sad part of social media. You don't necessarily take the time to know what you're posting, so... Yeah, exactly. I feel like performative activism has just yeah. shot to the roof now. Ellie, would you like to talk about, I don't know, uh, just not your life, I guess, but um, <laughs> for our listeners to, to know you more before continuing in our series of questions? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you want to know? I have so many things I could talk about. Do you have any um, specific questions you want to know? Any advice? life advice college college life advice yeah, because or anything you're a graduate you're yeah. not you're living in america that is a <laughs> that is unbelievable for us because we are in europe you know and uh... yeah that's so crazy <laughs> <laughs> um i would say to hmm i have so many things i could talk about let me think for a second I would say that it can be a really rough ride <laughs> because you just have so many things that you have to do, but make sure that what you're studying is something that you really want because I entered um, as, so what we have in terms of majors is you can either like come in with a specific major or you can say that you are 
uh, you don't know yet and you don't have like a label on you. So that's how I came in. And I really like tried on different hats. I wanted to be a psych major. I wanted to be a sociology major, East Asian studies major. I tried all of those classes and then I realized that those weren't for me. And then I eventually chose public health. Um, that's what I major in now. And then I minor in women's gender sexuality studies. Um, and it was kind of hard because everybody that I know, Johns Hopkins is a very medically focused school, very science heavy, science heavy research. All of my friends are studying biology, neuroscience, chemistry, engineering, all of those things. And I felt like I had to do that as well. And I just could not, that just did not fit me, but I, I felt pressure to do, take those classes. So just know that whatever you choose, you will be successful in it because you've already, you're going to college, you obviously got there and you have a very high um, determination. Also, I think in terms of social life, just like make sure to set your own boundaries because one thing that I realized was when I first entered college, I was so set on just trying to make as many friends as possible that I didn't really choose who I wanted to become friends with. And I didn't realize that you know, there, there are some bad people out there. There are some people that you won't vibe with um, and you have to like figure that out for yourself. So make sure to set your boundaries and make sure to keep your um, social circle tight with the people who you actually care about and the people who actually care about you. That is wonderful advice. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> we're super, we're, we're like in, oh, you're talking, we're like, whoa. That's yeah. tiring. And I didn't know that um, you guys can go to university and not knowing what you want to do because we can't do that here. Oh, really? What is it like um, in France? Uh, we need to choose at the beginning and then you're studying for three years. Um, that is an undergraduate, uh, yeah, degree. undergraduate, uh, deg yeah, thank you, <laughs> degree. And then if you want to do a master, you you follow and then you have two years of master to do. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that that's is so crazy. long. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can do like four years and then have a job. We can't do yeah. that. We cannot do yeah. that. <laughs> that's wow. crazy how different it is. Yeah. And you guys also can do many things outside. Like yeah, we can. you're playing the violin. You're doing <laughs> a capella. You're doing an acapella group. That is my dream. That is my really? Dream. Oh my gosh! We should, like, should do one together. <laughs> we don't have that here. On Zoom. <laughs> yeah, acapella. Acapella, acapella Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> that is should really interesting. Do you have sports or like other activities that are available, like clubs and stuff? Or yeah, we have, but because of the COVID, uh, we haven't we haven't ooh, haven't been to college. Since, since October, September. yeah, October. October, yeah. So it's and also kind of complicated. They are putting like sports and clubs when you have classes. Oh, <laughs> that's I don't weird. Understand. I don't understand the system here. <laughs> so yeah, guys, we're super happy. Like, if you have any question to ask Ellie, just let us yeah. know, and uh, she will answer it, of course. But that is, su we're super happy to be yeah. doing that with you <laughs> you are our like first um how can i say that non like she's not like the you first are... guest that we actually don't um, really know yeah because like we know um, you but you're not in our circle our usual circle yeah so... exactly so our first first guest were like friends or yeah friends basically uh, <laughs> so yeah well, this is so fun. I've never done a podcast before. And it's especially cool because we're doing it overseas. Yeah. So sorry, guys, for our English again, because, uh, yeah. It's been a <laughs> long time. So good. I know, like, bonjour in French. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Au revoir. You, I don't you can know. Say, you can say bonjour, je m'appelle Ellie. Oh, my gosh. So bonjour, je m'appelle. Pal, Ellie. Yeah, my yeah, name is that's Ellie. it. See, French class, free yeah, French class. I'm, I'm a pro now. She's a pro, guys. Next podcast in French. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, our last question. We're so sad. Um, you kind of like answer it to it, but thanks to your experience and um, what you to what you've told us, what would be your advice? for people who want to start creating and uh, want to share everything that, not everything, but you know, like 
everything they want to say on the internet, whether they are women, men, you know? Um, yeah, I think I touched upon this a little bit before, but there are going to be so many times where you are judged for even just being on a social media platform. Even your friends, they are going to talk behind <laughs> <laughs> give you the side eye and say oh, this is a little cringy you know I don't know if you want to do that um but simply just create and I know that for me especially as a perfectionist I really want to fine-tune everything before I post and I'm trying to get better at it but when you're first starting out just focus on quantity over quality because you don't really know what you want to do you don't know how you want to format your content so having those things is like a trial and error process and I feel like that really helps down the line um also I think this is something that I'm struggling with too but and I know that a lot of influencers say just be yourself just just you know be yourself but it's so hard to be yourself because there's so many different influences that you have you don't and you're still trying to figure out who you are most of the time I think <laughs> um and it's really hard to just be yourself like I don't really know what that means when people say that so just like accept that it's going to be a twisty and turny process like you don't have to feel like you're doing everything um, like according to like your own, I don't know how to say it. It's so hard to say because a lot of influencers just give that advice and don't back it up with like any way to go about it. Um, but just the fact that you are trying to figure out yourself is you being yourself and you being self um, accepting. So that's another piece of advice. And then furthermore, this is more for Instagram, but it can also be um, for TikTok and Twitter and all that, but really appreciate your followers because they're the ones that are giving you all the support. They're the ones taking um, time out of their busy um, day to like read your caption or to send you a DM. And I don't think like, I don't think I've done it many times except for the people that I really, really appreciate and love. So if they're doing that to you, I just feel like you need to thank them. Um, and like something that I really love about my Instagram account is that a lot of my followers are so open and willing to communicate. Like they'll just send me DMs about what they're wearing that day or maybe something like a fight with a mom. And I just feel like that's, again, I said, it's like a privilege for you to be able to um, talk to them about their life. They probably won't even share that with their friends or family. Um, and you kind of have that cool connection that you can't really have um, if you know them in real life. So I would say to kind of revel in that and make sure to um, take advantage and, and let people know that you love them. That was wow. amazing. <laughs> yeah, we don't have anything to say. Like you said everything that is so... Yeah. I just have one, one last question. <laughs> <laughs> um, who... Tell us, Leslie, tell us. I'm, I'm struggling with English today. Who are the people, who is the people who inspire you? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, that's hard. Because um... you talked about uh, being yourself. So, I don't know, who is, who is your inspiration? I think I have a lot of different sources. One thing I've been trying to do on Instagram is I've literally unfollowed so many influencers because they just give a really, um, just like a really fake, <laughs> fake version of their life. And it makes me feel genuinely bad. And I know that other people would probably feel bad too. And like their life is so aesthetic. So that's why I follow them. But I made the decision to unfollow anybody that didn't really suit um, my purpose and like my journey and trying to find myself. So some creators that I've been trying to follow along is, I don't know if you know her, but Jen M. She's a uh, Korean American YouTuber. Um, I think Jen M, is she's going to be a mom? No. Yes, yes, yeah. that's her. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. yeah. I feel like she's opened up so much more about her life and her struggles um, when she originally just did fashion. And I really admire that and then in terms of real life it's really my friends my family um my my mom and my sister weren't going to be able to make it to graduation but then the school gave us financial aid so that they can come Aww. so they're actually here like outside of my door right now and i love them so much i just feel like they're the true people that i can rely on um 100 without question um and then in terms of like general inspiration for content I really try to find like little things in life, like picking up a coffee, talking to a friend. Um, it seems kind of shallow, like the shoes that you wear, but like the shoes that I wear have taken me so many places. It's been with me at like different hangouts. Like literally I've worn them to Europe. 
in France, actually. <laughs> so I feel like, yeah, I, I don't get when people are like, oh, stop taking pictures of your clothes. Like you're so vain. Like it's, it's not because I'm really appreciating um, yeah. what those things symbolize. And you're making memories too. Yeah, so, exactly. Well, that is very little exciting. things. Yes. Little things matter. <laughs> That's what we wrote one day in our oh, really? IG account. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So guys, we're really sorry, but that will be the end of the episode <laughs> right now. So thank you very much, Ellie, for yeah, taking the you. time uh doing this podcast with us because we know that you are busy. Like really she's a busy girl. She's going <laughs> places, she's going everywhere. And um <laughs> Today we discussed very important subjects and uh, yeah, they were really, how do you, I cannot speak English today, but they were really uh, meaningful for us and we wanted to, to have an episode on that and having you talking about that was really, really great. And um, yeah, but before wrapping up also guys, Ellie, can you share us your accounts like IG account, TikTok account, YouTube channel? <laughs> So everything is at elephant, um, E-L-L-I, the number three, P-H-A-N-T. That would be in the description of the exactly. video, of the video, of the podcast. <laughs> I'm not on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so again, Ellie, thank you very much. And, no, uh, thank you for having me. This was so fun. <laughs> yeah. We were a little bit stressed, guys, so please uh, do not judge our English for this episode. But um, Be kind. Do, <laughs> if you have any question for Ellie or us, do not hesitate again to uh, DM us. And yeah, we would be very glad to answer that. And I think Ellie too. So yeah. Thank you so much again. This was amazing. <laughs> Bye-bye, guys. Bye and have Bye. a good day. Bye.